The legend this evening is not one that needs much introduction, but we all know him more by reputation. We know the persona behind the person. He's a director of the Commonwealth Games of Melbourne and Delhi. He has a doctorate from Middlesex University for his contribution to entertainment, not only in India, but world over. I would like you to give him a warm welcome, Mr. Shabab himself, Mr. Shabab Dawar. First of all, I'm very excited that you're excited to see me. So that's good for me. I'm very happy to be here. Uh, one very important thing is that the Geras have given me and I'm giving them something beautiful because they've given me something beautiful to do, which I've always been doing for 30 years. So I'm very proud and honored to be here. And I'm very happy they chose me. It's lovely to have you. We also have with us Marzi Pestonji. Marzi, introduction. And his name is Udi Baba. And he will speak to you in Hindi. Yeah. Thank you for having us here. Shukriya Dhani ke liye. What else to say in Hindi? No, actually, thank you very much. This is like a holiday for both of us, actually. We had a nice drive to Pune. And they are doing something exceptionally good for children, as well as families. So, you will get the most of it very soon. Actually, you will get the most of it. So, be for Kheda, always. So, without further ado, I'm going to request Managing Director, Mr. Rohit Gera, to come on stage and take this evening forward. Thank you very much. Um, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You know, I was sitting out here and when we got started, I got a little nervous. Because uh, she started speaking and we said, what are we here for? And everybody, nobody responded. I thought this was going to be like, are we here for an exam? But, um, you know, as, as, as the applause picked up and the tempo picked up, I think um, we're in the right place, we have the right people here, but do we have, do we have all our participants sitting in the audience? Well? Awesome. So, so um, will the participants please just stand up, just stand up, and will the families give them a huge round of applause? So, uh, these guys, as when, when we went out to them and Anita spoke with you know, a lot of the families, uh, a lot of them said, I can't dance, two left feet, what am I going to do? So, um, I want to talk about what these people have done in terms of, and how it links to us at Gera. Okay? Uh, can we see our, so yesterday we unveiled our new, our new logo, which I want to show you today. Um, can we have that please? So, uh, so our new, our new look, our new logo is Outdo. Our new theme is Outdo. And uh, in order to outdo, our philosophy of Outdo is not competing against anybody else. To us, Outdo is outdoing yourself. Getting better against yourself where you are your only competition. And I think what some of these people who went out there and pushed their own boundaries and are participating in this, in this event, coming up on stage and dancing in front of all of you, I think they are truly outdoing. So to us, to us, uh, about a year and a half ago, we, we, you know, we were deciding how do we look at our new, uh, our new image and how do we showcase what we do in a slightly different manner. And so we went to our agency and they looked into a lot of the things that we were doing. And amongst these were what you guys have experienced is our child-centric homes, uh, our five-year warranty that we give to, on all our projects. And just on an aside on the five-year warranty, um, we've been doing this for 10 years now. We've been giving a five-year warranty on all our homes and all our office buildings for the last 10 years now. And to us, the satisfaction 
The true satisfaction came recently when the government of India in their real estate regulatory bill for all developers across India has finally insisted on a five-year warranty from all builders all over India. <laughs> to, us, to us, we welcome this because we know this. We've been doing this for the last 10 years now. So let's see how you know, other people kind of catch up and so on. Which means for us, now that we've been doing this five-year warranty for 10 years, and now suddenly all other developers have to offer it, it's time for us to outdo again. So we'll try and figure out what we need to do next, and I'm sure um, we'll come up with something. So whether it's the five-year warranty, whether it's our child-centric homes, uh, we also believe that it's time for children to get exposure to all kinds of things today. Whether it's dance, whether it's dramatic, whether it's music, um, cricket, all kinds of stuff. You know, give, give kids the exposure so that in tomorrow's world, they can actually outdo. So for us, I think outdo is really a philosophy which works with our child-centric homes, which works with our uh, product offerings, which works with um, everything that we've been doing for the longest, for, for the longest time. So uh, I won't keep you from the next step or the next stage of this program. Thank you all very much for being here and uh, enjoy the show. Chairman sir, would you please escort our guests on stage, that's Shamak and Marzi. And we'll all be privy to a lovely tete-a-tete -tete, which we will have with them here on stage. For some time now, uh, we will be having a discussion here, what they've termed as a tete-a-tete. -tete. I'm going to be raising some uh, questions and uh, getting a little insight into this great personality, great individual who's sitting next to me. And both of them would enlighten us. And I'm going to try to get some questions to them which I feel would be in your minds also, as they were in mine. And uh, let me start by uh, the first one, Shyam, to you. Is that, you know, you've excelled in the fields of choreography, dance, and music in terms of singing yourself. If God was to tell you, Shamak, you can have only one of these three talents. You can't have all three. Which one would you choose? I tell God that you gave me two eyes, a nose, a lips, two ears. How can I do without the other? because I need them all, because that's what I'm about. I sing as an actor, I dance as a performer, as an actor, I do all three, so I would request him for just a little bit of all. And if he didn't accept your request? Ah, uh, then I, said, I think I eventually opt for singing, because that's what my first love that's is. That's your first love? At, at your present level of capability. Level, thank you. That's wonderful. So, singing is his first love, the second, choreography or dance? Yeah. And third would be dance. Okay. So that tells us about uh, something more about it, which is not available in the public domain. You know, the questions I'm going to ask him are, there's a lot of printed about him. If you get onto Google or you go anywhere, there's, there's so many accolades he's had. There are so many achievements. Uh, it's, it's really mind-boggling. Yeah? One is proud to uh, be associated with you when you see and understand all that. I had another question. You know, when it comes to dance, somehow we see that the Hispanics, the Latinos, the, the Blacks, there's something in their movement which is very special and different. Why is this and how is this? See, I'll tell you something. Um, this is what I've seen. Uh, being all over the world and uh, uh, from Africa to every place in the world, America and London and I mean New Zealand and Australia and the East, the West, everywhere, Egypt, every, every single place and India. I think that human beings are actually made up of color, sound, vibration and that energy is musical and everybody, every single person relates to it. Today, you don't know a song in Latin, but you will dance to it. 
There'll be a song called Deen Deen, Oh Deen Deen, but you'll love that song because it's in another language, but the rhythm will catch you. So I believe that every place in the world, the human beings are the same. Yes, they do have a natural innate talent. Uh, they have a natural gift. But I also think India being such a powerful country of so many festivals, so many marriages, so many things, they dance the way they dance. If you see them on the road dancing, they dance with abandon and they dance and they just fly high. So I don't see technically their body moving like I see abroad, but I see their souls moving. And here I think India has a lot of soul. So when you see them dancing, they will go crazy, but they will be dancing. So I think that, you know, India also has something else. But yes, um, other countries have it naturally within them. I think we also have it naturally within us. Only we have to train it sometimes. So you're not, you're not saying that uh, there is something in their genes, in the Latinos and in the blacks and the Hispanic? They're, they're mind-blowing, they're mind-blowing. I mean, they just have it in them, it's a fact. And it seems like everybody does, you know, it's just uh, across the uh, yeah. So how and why? I mean, is there any history to it? I just think that, you know, many years ago, uh, say in Africa, during the appetite, a movement where the blacks were put down, uh, the only way they would communicate with the other would be with me. And that was for the Mandela time I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah. They would only sing and they would communicate messages through singing. So that was something very powerful that they used to do and talk through singing. Uh, in the jungles of primitive, any primitive countries or jungles, they do things with drums and again vocals. Ooh, they, have, they have a rhythm, they have a chord. They communicate through, again, vocal, singing. So maybe that's something innate inside of them, inside of them, that is a part of who they are. You know, so it's, it's different for everybody. But I think every single place in the world has some gift, and everyone has a gift, and I think I love developing it. Especially people out here who are on a platform. That's why when Marcy was, uh, you know, he was starting out, uh, and he didn't know himself that he could be such a phenomenal host on a show, uh, until he was put there. And when he got this on that podium and started judging and doing Udi Baba all over the place, people loved him because he didn't know he was a natural comedian, he was a natural judge, he was very naturally had a natural flair for it. Besides his choreography, which he does with me, or his uh, assisting as an office person who does my entire office all over the world with me. So, you know, you just never know till you get there. So it's something that you have to also experience and something that is also within you. I honestly didn't think I was going to be a dancer choreographer. I thought I was going to go to singing and acting because when I went to London, they classified me first singer, then actor, then dancer. Yes, sir. Marzi, uh, are you a critic to him sometimes? Do you criticize his work? Are you uh, free and frank to tell him his Every day, every day he criticizes me. I generally get my salary from him. I can't criticize him. So, no, I've been here, I've been here for like 23 years now. Yes. And, as you know, I also started as a student, like anybody today sitting there. And one fine day he comes to class and he says, will you dance for me in my company? And I'm like, wow, okay, I said, okay, let's try. Good looking girls here in this company, so I said, never say no to that. So I joined, that's the reason I joined actually. And, today looking back to it, thank God I didn't do anything else. What's his biggest weakness? Biggest weakness? Yes. Food? What? Food. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he burns it off. No? I we don't see it. Time for I love food. food because I'm always eating food. I love food. He works so hard. He's like 20 hours awake the whole time. Every day is 20 hours awake. He sleeps for like 4 or 5 hours generally. But I eat. So he keeps eating. Can't control that. <coughs> Let me ask you a question on behalf of. Uh, parents, I'm not in that category, I'm in the grandparents category, but you know, where the little kids are concerned. But uh, as a parent who has, let's say, a young kid of 6 or 16 or 12, whatever, should I encourage my child towards dance or sports? Because there's only so much limited time, spare time, with all their uh, exams and studies and classes. So. If, I, if one has to choose between sports and dance, what should I tell my child? Where should I nudge him? 
I think your child will tell you because your child will naturally be a sports person or a dance person. Your child will naturally tell you, Daddy, I don't like dance, I want to do sports. Daddy, I want to dance. And that's the most important thing is to let them choose because they know what innately they're good at. So I think that's the answer I will give you. Thank you so much for that answer because that really has been Rohit's philosophy in creating this concept. As you can see the different fields of uh, people whom we have for the child-centric options is that exact same thing that the children should get the choice to choose where they want to have. Okay, great. I'm very happy with that. Uh, but can I just say one thing yeah. important for parents here? Um, <coughs> uh, parents, I just want to say this to you, that since 30 years I've been teaching children and I've been teaching even special kids who don't know how to, you know, they're just very special, they have no feet, they come on wheelchairs, crutches, uh, the deaf blind, a lot of people from the healthcare institute and even just children in general. I just want as parents for you to know that the only failure of a parent is when you push your child because you have a dream of something you wish you had done. Don't push your dream into the child if the child is not interested. Let them choose what they're interested in. Because I want to be a dancer, I wish my child danced, but you shove them in dance classes, shove them in being doctors. Let them develop what they are and help them grow and encourage them. Don't judge them. That's one thing about your parents because a lot of parents are pushing their children to wrong things and making them do things they wanted to achieve. That's the biggest mistake. Let them choose. It is very important that parents encourage their children into what they want to do. And believe me, when you do that, you will be surprised. My parents thought I was completely nuts when I told them I want to dance or sing. They thought, you know, you come from a family of, uh, you know, professionals, educationists. What is this nonsense you're doing, kicking your leg up in the air and singing? But where are you going to go? So I said, I love it. So they said, you have to first finish your education for me, mommy said. You finish your BCom or whatever, then you do what you want to do. So I understood that because education was very important for me. Because if I broke my legs, I lost my voice, I had something to fall back on. So that I encourage you is to give them education. But besides that, after that, if they want to pursue something they really want to do, don't make them feel guilty about it because that's where we go wrong as parents. So that's a very important message I had to tell the parents. Absolutely. To allow them to grow. Yeah, so, so, so let's take it forward now. Now suppose, now suppose the child is inclined towards dance. Your dance is contemporary dance. <clears throat> Should I encourage them towards Kathak, Bharatanatyam or contemporary dance? Very nice question. Very impressed. The Bobby's are lovely homework. Very impressed. Give my hand. What lovely question. You know, nobody asks me this question. They ask me things about strange things. This is lovely to hear such lovely questions. Well, I will always say to you again, if the child wants to learn dance, they have to learn a classical form, always. They have to. Be it ballet, kathak, bharatnatyam, odyssey, chow, I don't care. They have to learn a classical form because that classical form gives the base. If you don't have a classical background, like in ballet, you will not be what we call that kind of a dance. You'll always be substandard. You can do hip hop, you can do rap, you can do contemporary, but if you don't have a classical background, you have nothing. So that question is a very powerful question. And I must say that if your child wants to do Bollywood as well, fine. But a classical style is very, 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 very important. On the other hand, if the person gets bored, the child gets bored, don't push them. Let them do the Bollywood part. But let them also understand that there's also an option. Let them see the option. So classical is very powerful. Thank you. Uh, India has many festivals. There's uh, the literary festival, the food festival, the um, festivals in Goa. Uh, they don't have a dance festival in India. No, we do, we do. Uh -huh. no, it's coming soon. 
You don't you have it as yet. yet. Not yet. Okay. okay. So, I want to go down that route with you. What's your vision for a real dance festival where an entire city, wherever it's being held, is engulfed in all kinds of dance for that week or three days or whatever is the period. And you really have it going like a Mardi Gras or whatever. And it's dance, dance, dance. How and when can that happen? And what's your vision on that? A dance festival for me is where, again, because I come from a place where I think education is my genes and that's why I'm probably a decent teacher because my father, mother, my mother is 94, she still goes to Dallas College of Commerce and teaches. My father today had Alzheimer's or dementia. Uh, he went to the office and taught. Uh, I believe education is very important. The dance education is very powerful. Through schools and colleges and everything we can do it. But a festival is where you can actually put all styles of dance, which includes the classical, the modern, the contemporary. Even I would put malakam, I would put silk, I would put all these parts for dance because we use all that in dance. From the even legend to everything that is even folk, I would encompass everything in one place. And if I had my way, I would probably do a live broadcast on television where it goes to people all over. Like, you know, uh, they do yoga on television, like Ramde Baba and all these people. I'd like to do something like that where I can get up there and teach dance to people even in the remotest villages where I can't reach out. That's the dance festival I'd like to do. And for every single place, every home has a TV, every home. And then there's also a place to come and, you know, do the dance or learn the dance. The daytime will be the dance. And the evening are the performances of all different styles, calling even international performers. So that's why I would like it to be like a world dance, so that people see, they learn, they don't really learn five styles, they learn 50 styles. So that's what I would do. So where and where is this happening? That's Marcy. Hopefully so. He has been planning this for a couple of years now, and it takes forever to do it. Yeah. So when on Pune? When you decide to give us place, so, so who's giving it to you right now? We're looking for it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't lie. He's, he's not giving, giving any uh, way to us. No, no, honestly, you know what? Permissions are so difficult. To get a crown, you've got to get 50 licenses, 500 things. So we're quite fed up, but we're trying still. Because I don't believe in anything. Unless you really push, you're not going to get anywhere. So I'm going to push. Okay, I'll switch to something else. You've had so many successes, you've had so many accolades. Uh, what we just saw here was, I think, just the tip of the iceberg uh, compared to what you've really achieved in life. But you must have had some serious disappointments too. Do you want to talk about them and tell us some of them and then how you kind of got out of it and risen from it so that people can learn that even when you're down, there's, there's a way to go up. Okay. Okay, this will take about two minutes, I'll tell you, because I want the truth to come out so you understand what happened to me. This is very important for parents to know. I always, always felt very different as a child. I always felt very, uh, I felt like a mystic. I was very loving, I was very compassionate, I was very friendly. I would be friend, friends with my fisherwoman, I would be friends with the, my mochi, I would be friends with everybody. I, I didn't understand this whole thing of, uh, you know, elite and uh, all that nonsense. So I was a very open person. Being so open, I was also very dramatic. I would call my cousins in the living room and I would have a skirt and I would open it and I would start becoming this legend in my living room thinking I was a big legend, a big star and I would enact scenes from movies, I would sing, I would do things like that. They thought I was nuts. My family said, but he's fun. Growing up, growing up, growing up, growing up, I realized that, okay, one has to study, one has to get educated like my father did and my mother did and all that, but something inside me my subconscious mind, the mind inside of me, what we call the higher self or the subconscious, not the physical mind, was always feeling a vacuum. I was not happy. I was not fulfilled. My soul was not happy. And I tried my best to explain.
explain to my parents I want to do something in the performing arts. The first thing they said, darling, get a degree, then you can do what the hell you want. So I said, why? And then they went straight in the degree, uh, and I got a decent percentage. Not great, 56%. So I was not some scholar child, I was nothing, I was quite a dumb boy. Especially maths, physics, chemistry, I was like 0 on 10, or 0 on 100. But, in the dramatic department, and my sports department, I was a very good athlete. And I was strange, high jump, long jump, you know, sprinting, all the things that had stretched the leg, where I could, I didn't even know that, I just, it came to me very naturally. So, telling my parents about to do something, I was singing in school, I would play the piano in school and sing and sing and sing. So they thought it was a frivolous activity. And that time, about 30 years ago, there was nothing like dance classes. So I spoke to my grandmother, I don't know if you know who she was, but uh, I, I doubt you will know, but uh, there was a, a lady called Fearless Nadia Andarwani. Do you know who she was? Yes, you know? Yeah. So she told me, and her husband was Homi Wadia, uh, like me, Shantaram, and the, the biggest uh, producer and director in films that time. So she, her name was Nadia, but for me she was very much as my grandmother. And she would say, Shama, just do it. You want to sing, dance, do it. And she forced my father and she said, listen, let him try it at least. We don't want him to regret anything. So because of that, I tried it and it worked. I went to London, I went to a place called the Pineapple Dance Studio, where I went and did some classes in voice and uh, singing and acting, and uh, then I saw a classroom, which was a see-through class, and I said, oh, this is lovely, I want to learn this, this dance, they do some dance. So I went to class, and just did two classes, after which the teacher came to me and said, oh, uh, I like your style, you've obviously had some classical training, and I just looked at him and said, no, I have had no training at all, I've just done nothing, no training. He says, it can't be, you've got training. I said, uh, no, I haven't had any training. You must have done some ballet. I said, no, there's only one ballet school and I couldn't go because there were only girls. I was very scared to go. He said, uh, are you sure? I said, yeah, I'm sure. So he said, no, but you have to pursue this because you're very talented and you're natural. So I didn't really believe it. I thought he wanted me to come to class because you know they make money when you come to class. But eventually something made me say, go, go, go. So I went there, I did the classes and I remember a very bad experience where I was dancing and I asked this person, can you please help me because I don't understand the step. And he turned on to me in London and said, I'm just so sorry, I don't help Indians. Yeah, uh, I can't show you the step, we don't help Indians. And I just looked at him and said, excuse me, I didn't know what hit me. Okay, now, this is 20 years ago. I, for the five minutes, I didn't answer what he said. I don't help Indians, it makes sense to me. So I asked him again, because what I've heard wrong. I said, listen, I don't know the step, can you help me again? Next class. I told you I don't help Asians. So I said, uh, okay. Luckily, I didn't say anything to him because he was a black belt guy. He was a very strong, black belt, wild guy. So I said, okay, forget it. So when I came back to Bombay, I got a lot of, um, I felt good doing what I was doing. And I thought, what is the use of me just dancing on stage? I want to give this, I want to teach this, I want to teach this. It's my father's and my mother's thing of education. And I thought, you know what, I want to teach it. So I started with seven students. Five were my friends and family, two were actual students. I started that, I went into musical theater with Alec Padamsi. I became an actor and a singer. And many years later, because that time, Theatre was very big, now it's dead. And I did a lot of plays with Alec Badamsi, so people knew who I was, and then they came to my classes. So slowly, slowly my classes grew. But while my classes grew, everyone around me said, you're never gonna make it, you should have been a doctor, you should have done your father's profession, it's a sissy job, you're a boy, you should not dance, it is not good. And girls who would come to my class, actually were afraid to come to my class because then the parents would say to them, who will marry you if you go to a class wearing these costumes? Because that time we used to wear 
leotards and tight, tight fitting clothes. So some came to me actually in a sari, which I met in the plane 20 years later, do you remember? And some would come in salwar kameez and all, and come to class, still come to class. Who would marry these girls, they would say. Eventually, all that stigma, all that nonsense stopped. And suddenly, a girl who came into my dance class many years later was a girl called Gauri. Now, I don't know who she was. She was a sweet girl who came and danced. And outside, there was a man standing smoking his cigarettes. And I was wondering, who's that guy outside? He's smoking in the compound of the school. He has to go out and or smoke outside. And uh, Gauri said, no, that's my husband, Sharu. So I said, OK, OK. I said, so what does he do? He just finished some television. He's doing a movie now. And no idea about television and I'm not very much into this stuff so no 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 please he would come every day Shahrukh would come every day and uh, pick up his wife Gauri from Najok he would live at I think Bandra and slowly after some time Gauri called me over and she said you know Shahrukh wants to talk to you and by the time he became a star and I got to know who he was you think passing a good time and he said that I'm doing a movie now after many movies Called Dil to so I said, are you mad? Don't even ask me. I have no idea what you're talking about because I will not photograph any movie like that because I have no concept of the Hindi uh, body of choreography. It's too so difficult and I can't do that. No, 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 you don't understand. Yash Ankhil has told me and guess who's in the movie? So I said, who? He said, Marjorie. So then a little bit, uh, I mm, got a little flutter in my heart because I love her. And then she said, Karishma, both good dancers. I said, wow. And me. So I said, oh, okay, you. <laughs> so he I'm playing your role. I'm playing the role of a choreographer, so do it. So I think that whole night, Shahrukh drove me completely mental. He drove me mad over dinner. He said, you'll be nothing. You will do nothing but your classes. You'll do your five shows to your Parsi friends who come and see your shows in theater. Nobody will know who you are. Look at Prabhu Deva, look at the others. Like, you don't make me shout out, five people will know you. I said, listen, that's not going to make me do it. He says, trust me, I'm in the movie. I said, I, I don't know how to, I only have my dancers. I only can use my people. I don't know how to tell them things. He said, no, you can use your dancers. So that one thing made me feel good. Then I said, secondly, I don't have a card. Because together, you, you, you've got to be a part of a union and all that stuff. I have no concept of. Well, Yashanka did everything for me in the end, and he loved me so much, so much, because he really looked after my dancers and me. And that was the time I, w I took up my album called Mohammed Karlin and uh, Jani Kisne. So he loved the song so much, he put that in the movie also when Madhuri was rehearsing, if you remember. Do you remember that? Right. So, to cut a long story short, I, have to, I know I have to hurry up, but it's so difficult to speak about my life in two minutes. Even then, people put me down. They said, you'll never make it. This movie's going to flop. It's too Western. Yashanka said, I want your style. I don't care if it's Western. I want your style. Now, when someone believes in you, I had more Josh. So I choreographed one song. It was called Lege Lege. So I saw it and said, OK, that's not looking so bad. So I'll try another one. So I said, but I want to use my children. So they said, okay, there's a song I need to for children called Chak Dum Dum. So then I did Chak Dum Dum. Then I started enjoying it. And then I did Are Re and then I did the dance thing, Jukal Mandi with Madhuri and uh, Karishma in that, in that small little circle. Do you remember that song, Dance of Envy? The Jukal Mandi? And that's eventually how I did the film. Still people said to me, it's going to be a flop. I remember this whole sequence. It's never going to work. Your style is too... Western, it's never gonna work. Eventually, it became a hit, the style became a hit. People said I've got dance to another level, so I was very happy. Even after that, there was a lot of trouble. People never wanted me to come into the industry. They did a lot of things to stop me at every level. And frankly, I wasn't that interested. I loved teaching. I missed my evening classes. I missed teaching. I missed that. So I gave up films. And that's why you'll see I've only done very few films. Dil to Paak Le, Bandi Babli Do, Tal, which one? Rabdi Bani Jodi. Very few films. And now I'm one called Jaka Jasus with Katrina and Rani. Yeah. Because it's a musical with Anurag Basu. It's a musical which means it's all music and no talking. It's fun. 
So I still tell you that the opposition you face is very good for you. The suffering you face is very good for you. Do not take it like suffering. Think of it as a challenge. What is the motto out here? Out here? What did he say? What was the, what was the word he used? Outdo. What does that mean? Outdo nobody else. Outdo yourself. Because if you don't outdo, there will be somebody else who will do it and you will regret it. Somebody else will. Because somebody else will have the courage to go through. Believe me, I used to get very upset. I used to walk into restaurants. People would call me names because I taught dance. I was a boy teaching dance. It was horrible. And I remember my father had Alzheimer's. My mother had breast cancer. It was a very bad time for me. And I still went through it because of one thing. Because of the book called The Laws of the Spirit World, where it's written by the Dharma Gurus, which taught me about just being a good person and overcoming yourself and your negativity. And that's how I changed that book, The Laws of the Spirit World. And that's what took me up to the other level. And then I realized the challenges were nothing but stepping stones to success. Because if you don't have suffering, you cannot build your character. You will never understand somebody else. And that is why when children come to my classes and they go throw dang, not I want to go home. I would say, okay, Danny, you go home. I don't treat them as kids. I treat them as adults. I let them be, and on their own they come. So all I'm saying to you is stop the nagging, just be natural with the kids, and they will flourish. That's all I'm saying. Sorry too long. Uh, thank you for opening up. You were speaking from your heart, and I'm so glad that it just came out, and we really appreciate it. Thank you so much. I, I have just two quick ones, because I think we are running out of time, and there's so much more to happen this evening. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I was at a lunch this afternoon, and I met a young lady, and it was just coincidence, you know, it was just by chance. She was in school with Shyam, and she told me, I, I mean, she was surprised, she said, why are you in a rush, why are you leaving? I said, I've got this. She said, oh, Shyam, Shyam, I was in school with him. Okay, great. And I said, all right, now tell me something about Shyama, which is not in the public domain, which is not known to anybody, because if you were in school with him for many years, I'm sure you would know. And you know what she said? She said, he is a wonderful person. I'm trying to quote her as exactly as I possibly can. She said, he's a wonderful person. He's extremely caring, extremely giving, spiritual, has some extraordinary abilities of looking beyond into certain things. I didn't quite catch that. But also very spiritual. But he is a great guy. Uh, she said all the nice things, and I told you who uh, she is, so you can send her a note or whatever. Uh, but she was all praise for him. But I'm curious about the spiritual part. If you can just tell us a little bit, we are short of time, I know it's a very big subject for you personally, and the fact that you, through your dance medium, have been helping uh, the underprivileged, have been helping the differently abled ch children and people through the medium of dance and spirituality. On this, can you just touch upon very briefly, quickly, uh, you know, I don't know how you can do that. Okay, Soul, soul, and soul is the same thing. You're a physical person, you have a life, you have choices. You make good choices and bad choices. No regret. You have karma, you cannot escape it. You can try and fool everybody around you, you can try to fool God, you can fool people, but you will never fool him because it will come back to you like energy. It always completes circles. 
If ever you believe in anything, I can tell you that reincarnation exists. There is a place for you after you go. Some of you have lost a lot of people, and I can see a lot of people here who are who are not on Earth. Someone here out here recently lost someone also. I can see that as well. And I know that there is life after. You cannot escape the law. There is karma. There is justice. No. There is no justice. Look at that person. He's evil and he's so happy. Look at that other person. They are doing very well. Look at us. Never compare yourself to anybody else. What was the thing out here? What was the word out here? Outdo who? Not them. The minute you start comparing, there's always somebody better. There's always somebody worse. Never compare. Outdo with yourself. Use the mind that is the spiritual mind. No, I must murder. No, I must hurt. No, I must take revenge. Use that mind which you don't listen to and then you get chopped somehow. Listen to your subconscious mind, that mind that says, mm, no, 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 no. Awaken that. And I promise you, the more you awaken your subconscious mind, your inner self, you will fly. Revenge, negativity, guilt, all will go away. Selfishness, pride, it all goes away. And pride, oh my God, my guru told me, from the Laws of Spiritual Book, Mrs. Bhavnagri. She lost two of her sons in a car crash, and she was a very simple person, really, with the husband. And she didn't know what happened to her. She got a shock, and then she wrote a book. Read the book. It is mind-blowing. She had no idea about life after death, but she wrote a book on it. But still today, people are writing the same thing. Till today, Brian Wise, big people are right, the same thing to do. So what I'm going to say to you is that pride has a fall. She told me my name has the word Shamak, S-H-I-A-M-A-K. If she says you take out the I, 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 and you keep the I silent, and you're called Shamak, you'll always be happy. The minute the Shamak comes, the I comes in, I, I, ego, ego, finished. So this is the basic values which I go through and I'll tell you one thing very honestly and this is from the heart whether you like it or not giving to charities trying to do things like mannat sorry to say this again uh, is it no use your charity is when you give of yourself it's very easy for millionaires to give money we don't even know where it's going we don't even know the charity is real so what we do with the Victoria Foundation, we give them the Braille machine, we give them the Jaipur foot, we give them their crutches, their wheelchairs, but we'll never give money, we will give them what they want. So please understand that what you do, you cannot fool and escape the law, no matter how much you try. Because by the end of your life, it will catch up with you and chop you. And who's chopping you? Not him. Your own karam. So, I'm just saying, don't fool yourself. Try and get more real with who you are, accept who you are, love who you are, and forgive yourself. Everybody makes mistakes. You are not God. You have to forgive yourself. And then forgive others. Because forgiveness, like dance, gives a healing. When you forgive, you will truly heal. When you're guilt-free, you will truly heal. So that's the nutshell of basically all I can say. Thank you. Thank you. Too heavy? Too heavy for you? Not at all. Up on ya? Up on ya? Head ke up on ya? Acha laga? So chillao na? That's that. Shyamak, the... Not the choreographer, not the dancer, not the singer, but the person. And that is great, Shyamak. Uh, my last one to you. And this is uh, as a flag purchaser in Song of Joy. Okay? Uh, I've, let's say I've bought a flag. I'm not talking as Gera. I'm talking as a flag purchaser. Shyamak, you are going to be uh, involved with offering us, my family, my children, 
an opportunity for experiencing dance. The Geras are talking about putting all this together. And you both are talking about Audu. What should we expect? What is it that we can look forward to when we move into our homes in Song of Joy? And this is actually addressed to both of you. So you can, you know, uh, tell us what, what is it that we would expect from uh, your organization. The most beautiful thing that the Keras have done is God danced to your doorstep. Literally. You don't have to go outside to find it. You have it here, within your home, within your territory, within your house, and it's for everyone. It's from the age of four to, well, my youngest student is 84, dancing on stage. I promise you, you will see on the video, the video is there 84. And they are the most regular. Kids will learn at your doorstep all that I can offer you in terms of dance, but more important, the training. We have a one-year program. We have a six-month program. We also have master classes for three months. It depends what and how it develops. If I find the standard of work is becoming better and better, we'll start doing stronger and higher education in dance, again at the doorstep, which is only done in Bombay. So you will learn not only one style, many styles of dances. It will be right there for you. You'll have brilliant teachers who come. And at the end of the sessions, we put you on stage, where you yourself will perform, whether you're 484, and will perform on stage. So that will be something, you know, the times I've done the summer funk and the winter funk presentation, or presentations as we call them. You have to see problem children, shy children, unhappy children, depressed children, abused children, suddenly becoming confident. They suddenly become Aware. They don't want to do anything else because they love the dance. They love what they're doing, so they don't go into the wrong habits. They don't go into anything stupid. Because idle mind goes for some. Here they come into class, oh my god, now I have to do a song, or my costume, or my this, or my that, or my steps. And they will rehearse and they will focus on a positive channel. This is why I say dance is healing. I'm telling you. A lot of people have been healed in my school and I don't like to sound like a show off, but it's the truth. I'm not doing anything. It's the dance that is doing it. And suddenly the kids are so confident. They feel good about themselves. And it's right at your doorstep. You don't have to go any to this at the camp, go through that where else, all the places, all the venues. You're there in next to you. So you will be having training next to you, right in where you are. And when it progresses more and more, we'll start developing more courses for you. We have ladies batches, we have batches for people who just want to lose weight, we have only exercises, we have dance, we have both. Uh, but we love to, how do I say, educate you more in performance, because that is what eventually makes you confident. Because too many children are nagged, they're overdone by tuitions, they're driven crazy by their schools, they're driven, sorry to say, crazy by their parents who want them to become top class people, but they're not capable. They may be very good at something else, painting. Don't snag them, just let them do what they want. If they don't like coming to class, let them not come to class. Let them be happy what they're doing, and I promise you they will grow. And we will bring it right to your doorstep. That's all I can say. And we'll teach them a lot of stuff. Say now, come on, Hindi man. You won't leave anything for anybody to say. Um, I'll just tell you one thing. What he meant to say is, you will have Shama in each and everyone's home. Something Not me, huh? I don't mind if you give me good uh, food. Good food, he said. Achar. So basically, Green something tree. that is exclusive for Gela, and we've not done it for any city in the country or anywhere in the world. I really have it. I've this is completely exclusive for you all. So make the best use of it, and you never know how far your child can go where dance is. And I still say to you this, 
that all this depends on your commitment to us. If your child and if you are committed to us, we will give you 500%. And you can ask anybody anywhere in the world if our school is any different anywhere. If you give us 100%, we'll give you 500 But you have to commit also. I will ask and love to do it. I was just about to conclude by saying that uh, let's shake hands just now and the handshake would mean that we are committed together to outdo for our clients. But having heard your last comment, I think the handshake should be right across this room that we are all committed together to outdo together. Thank you. Thank you so much. God bless. Yeah. Thank you, my darling. Look at handsome your screen. Look at look how handsome your job. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Gera. Shama Kenarji, can we have a round of applause, please? Thank you. Put your hands together for our first group of performers, our twinkle job little ones.
girls like to swing. <laughs>
on this evening and their thoughts, their experience and what they felt. I am truly speechless what you guys have done in what, 10 days of, 10 days of practice. Outstanding. Outstanding. 10 days of practice. Nothing. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Truly a huge round of applause for everybody. I think, uh, and a big, big shout out to all of you who thought that you don't have uh, can't dance and don't have a rhythmic bone in your body and all of that. I, or feel, I didn't see a single person on the stage who can't dance, okay? All of you guys are outstanding hats off to all of you. Well done. Shamath, I'm going to now ask you to please tell us what you thought about the event, any thoughts that you have. I just think that what you said, dance for joy, proved it today. Uh, you've outdone yourself, as you know. Would you have ever thought that you would come on stage and dance? Tell me honestly up there. No. So are you happy? Do you feel confident? Yes. Do you feel good about who you are? Yes. Enough. That's the whole thing. That's all about That's what it is about. So I'm very thankful to you all. The Gerards are wonderful. Thank you so much. Lovely hospitality. I must say that um, Half Feet Will Dance is very powerful. And you will realize how it will heal you. So just think of what I said about healing. It will heal you, it will heal you completely because once you conquer the stage, you will feel an innate strength within, you will feel a goodness within, you will feel positive. So important in a negative world. You will feel so positive and then you can share it and give it out. So thank you very much for everything. Thank you Marzi for being with me. Thank you Siddharth so much and my dance team. And all of you participate tonight, thank you so much. We will be at the door step soon.